SMDC. Hi, everyone. Today, I'm excited to talk to SMDC President Joe Marie Benzon. Listen into our conversation as we talk about the current state of the real estate market and hear his insights on how the industry can brave through today's pandemic crisis and overcome its implications on the market. And what's your story? So how did you get started into real estate? And uh, now you're the president of SMDC. How did that journey happen? I've been in the real estate industry for 15 years. Um, I didn't start out in the real estate industry. I actually started out as a commercial banker. I, I worked in uh, commercial banks, both in Hong Kong and in the Philippines. Um, but uh, back in 1998, when the Asian financial crisis happened, um, banks were saddled with uh, a lot of bad debts that were secured by real estate. And apparently the group, that uh, what, what the banks were doing was that they were um, trying to liquidate their loans by uh, liquidating the real estate, either by selling them or by uh, entering to joint ventures with developers. And uh, the group I was with had both a bank and a real estate company and the principals kind of saw that I had a knack on real estate. So they yeah. decided that, uh, yeah. to try me out in the uh, real estate company. And uh, I never looked back since. So uh, <laughs> quite, quite a rewarding uh, industry to be in. Uh, quite yeah. happy uh, doing real estate. Okay. So what made you want to come back really to the Philippines? Was it um, just because of the opportunity or are there other reasons? When I went overseas, I didn't think I'd stay there that long. I, I'd always had plans of coming back. It took a little yeah. longer than I expected, but uh, I'm happy that I came back. Great, great. And you're happy at the, in the real estate industry? Uh, your experience has been... Very much, you know, no, very much no. so. It's nice to create uh, products uh, mm. like housing, which actually um, uh, tailor fit to what the Filipinos want. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, the Filipinos always dream to have their own homes. And it's very mm -hmm. fulfilling. Uh, to be able to address that market. Okay, great. And as the um, the president of SMDC, what's like one question that you always get asked that you're 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 tired of hearing? Uh, okay, actually, the personal question I always get asked is if I still run. I I used to <laughs> run a lot. I actually run marathons, but oh, wow. um, uh, as uh, here in SMDC, it's been very difficult uh, yeah. to to run that much anymore so yeah. i miss it but then it's a trade-off yeah. where do you where do you find time uh do you usually run early in the mornings or, or what uh, yeah I, I usually run at 4 a.m oh wow because, uh, i want to avoid the the heat <laughs> that time it's still cooler but yeah not, not 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 as much as i used to yeah uh, i keep people keep asking me if i still run I don't feel too happy answering that because uh, no, not as much as I would have wanted to. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so in, in your, um, I guess the, the last couple of months or so, what's the, what's the state of the real estate market like for you guys? Um, I can only answer about the residential real estate market uh, in the affordable segment because that is what SMDC is serving. Yeah. Um, so wait, it's, Looking good for SMDC, actually, uh, we perform quite well, uh, even in this uh, current uh, crisis, the pandemic crisis. We, our sales in the first six months of 2020 is up compared to the same period last year. Um, mm -hmm. We've been quite okay. Now, the reason is that um, uh, the, mar the, the demand remains strong. There was mm -hmm. an article by uh, Dr. Bernie Villegas, one of the renowned, renowned economists, there was an article he wrote last week that um, says that a family with household income of uh, ranging from 20 to 70,000 pesos uh, would normally be able to afford uh, housing that costs about 800,000 to 5 million. So that's a price range. So that market is considered the lower middle to middle middle uh, uh, income bracket, 20 mm -hmm. to 70,000 pesos. <laughs> And the, um, they would normally buy somewhere ranging from 800,000 to 5 million. That's about low cost to economic housing level. Now, that particular uh, market segment, 
um, represents about 36% of the 22 million households in the Philippines. So 36% means 8 million households in the Philippines are, are targeting the affordable housing market. Well, of the 8 million, only 3 million don't have their own homes. So that's the market that SNDC is serving, 3 million households. But SNDC produces only 30,000 units a year. So 30,000 is only 1% of the demand of 3 million. So that, um, that's why our sales continue to be strong. If we can't sell with uh, those kinds of odds, then we shouldn't even be in this business. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Um, this pandemic, now, of course, it's affected everybody. Um, a lot of the OFWs have been uh, sent home, uh, mm -hmm. which is important to us because we, um, up to 70% of our sales is to OFWs. So mm -hmm. that uh, when they get, home, they, they get sent home, uh, they lose their jobs, we, we, we should worry. However, even if 600,000 OFWs, uh, that's the estimate, 600,000 of them will be sent home or have been sent home, there's still 10 million of them out there. 10 million, let me say, uh, 30 billion US dollars uh, estimate for 2020. 30 billion US dollars, that's lower than last year's 34 billion US dollars. Yeah? yeah. But 30 billion is still 30 billion. That's 1.5 trillion pesos. That's the kind of money uh, that, um, that uh, there is uh, that can be directed towards real asset investment. So, to answer the question, um, the affordable residential market continues to be strong yeah. because uh, the fundamentals are there uh, and um, uh, there's a lot of money going around uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. for that market. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Um, I think uh, you bring up a good point that Verbins is, um, you know, while it's taken a dip, it still remains, uh, you know, one of the major, um, you know, forces for, for the economy and majority of that is still going towards real estate. Uh, most OFWs are making their first investment uh, back to the Philippines in, in the real estate market, which has kind of helped the properties uh, industry stay afloat uh, for so long and, and always been resilient, uh, even through the many, many crises that have happened over the years. Uh, I think the, the property sector has been the most resilient. Um, have you have you also found that as well? Well, yeah, definitely. Um, but we need to be sensitive to the fact that many of them have uh, impaired income. So we need to adjust our payment terms to make it still comfortable for them. At the end of the day, everybody wants to own their own home. This is a Filipino dream. So uh, uh, we just need to be make sure that we uh, design our products in, in to, to come up with something that they're looking for, and yeah. have the features of that they're looking for, and make it affordable. Yeah. Can, can, you, can you take us a little bit more into detail, like how you make it attractive for them? Like what are some of the um, you know, the, the ways you make it attractive and affordable for people who have taken these hits financially? Like can someone who's going to buy their first home, um, you know, on that, on that price range uh, that you mentioned before in terms of uh, their income, um, can they afford a, an SMDC property, uh, you know, even if they're like a millennial? Uh, in terms of affordability, we, um, no, we have a uh, product where you don't even have to give a down payment. You just pay uh, maybe up to 20% for four years, which is actually quite comfortable. And then the bank takes out the balance, uh, the 80% after four year period. So you just have to make that monthly amortization uh, match their um, monthly income. We uh, study that every time just to make sure that the products we come up matches the pockets of the cash flow of our buyers. Um, of course, we need to have the features that they're looking for uh, in terms of location. It needs to be uh, uh, properly located, convenient. I should have the features that uh, make them comfortable. Like we have very, very nice lobbies. We have the gym, we have swimming pool. We, we have a, a way of um, upgrading their lifestyles. Yeah. So gives them dignity and they're happy with the investment. Definitely. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> I think, you know, it's something that the government has done to help stimulate the economy is uh, keep lowering the interest rates with the central bank. Um, I believe it's at a... Uh, you know, uh, uh, an all-time low essentially now, and and what that is doing is allowing for more lending to, to happen, and and the banks I think are, are are starting to follow in the sense that they're also starting to stabilize their interest rates, uh, which they're offering to consumers. So it does offer an opportunity for someone who wants to buy a home or invest in a home an opportunity now, uh, while the interest rates are staying uh, stable and and even lowered um, with promos from the banks. Uh, 
And I think that you mentioned before that you do offer a lot of amenities and um, can you take, kind of take us through your, like your, uh, your work, live, play, design philosophy that you have um, with, your, with your projects and how you minimize the carbon footprint? Well, the work, live, play. Um, for work, location is very important. Uh, many of our projects are located in CBDs or very near CBDs, very near their place of work. Or if not, um, it's near transportation of it. Just, uh, their work is just one right away. Uh, if, uh, uh, like the trend now, you yeah, have work from home, they decide to work from home. Uh, we've um, we designed our units to have workstations. Uh, even our common areas would have places where you can actually bring your laptop there and do, do your work there. We have very strong Wi-Fi. Um, and then in terms of uh, the live and play part, um, we have, like, like I said, we have um, very nice, very big lobbies, uh, very comfortable, air-conditioned, strong Wi-Fi, uh, couches. It's actually designed like hotels, very mm -hmm. elegant. And um, we have outside in the, we have resort-themed amenities, nice pools, very big gardens. Um, and then on the play part, of course, we have the gym, we have certain of our developments have even basketball courts so you can actually do you, you can stay in your in your in your um, uh, condominium complex and don't even go out and uh, you can do everything there already it's also convenient because we always have a commercial strip uh, so that uh, you can get your groceries uh, you can do your banking even mm -hmm. other services like uh, spa and get a haircut so mm -hmm. yeah so it, it's it, it's it's perfect in terms of um, uh, the uh, minimizing the carbon footprint, um, the fact that our um, developments are uh, located very conveniently, uh, you, we're always next to the malls and um, uh, or schools or transportation hubs. You rarely have to use your car, mm -hmm. so we 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 spare the earth of the carbon emissions. Um, yeah. we have a system of harvesting rainwater. Mm -hmm. which uh, we use to, to water the landscape and to clean the common areas. Uh, we have um, our lobbies, sorry, our, our common areas, the elevator lobbies are, have a lot of ventilation, a lot of fresh air, uh, LED lighting, so we save a lot of power. So we follow the, uh, the book on the green buildings uh, yeah. to, to minimize the carbon footprint. Definitely, yes. Yeah, sustainability is uh, a major uh, concern with many, many developers and also the, the public now. I think that um, the movement towards green, especially with the, you know, the, the, the pandemic as a catalyst towards a healthier living uh, lifestyle and being more aware of what's happening in the environment uh, is a help. So it's great that you, you guys are taking these initiatives. Um, can you take me through your, your Good Guys program? It's something I've seen a lot of, but I, I'm, I'm curious to know more about and what it actually means and, and what you do with that. Okay, well, the pandemic was very traumatic for everybody. So we tried to make it comfortable for our residents. Um, we have uh, we introduced a weekend, weekend market uh, where the residents can actually buy fresh produce. Uh, this actually started out, out as a tie up with SM Foundation because they have in their um, uh, was this contacts about 26,000 farmers. So we invited them to, to bring their produce to our developments and start selling fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, so that our residents don't have to go out because it, there's a lockdown. Uh, yeah. And then that evolved uh, because the residents themselves started to have their own products. They would bake food and they sell it in the weekend market. So that. Um, created a lot of uh, community interaction. Um, we also had a volunteer program where many of our employees and even residents, the younger ones would volunteer to do errands for the uh, PWD and uh, elderly who can't get out because of the lockdown, because of the pandemic. So they'll buy their medicines and their groceries. So there's a very strong uh, a sense of volunteerism. Um, we also have, we, we offered um, uh, webinars uh, to our residents that would tackle uh, all kinds of topics like um, uh, mental health uh, mm -hmm. and wellness and exercise and cooking and yeah. even how to avoid uh, cyber, you know, cyber crime. 
So, so yeah. we kept them interested, in, interesting. Um, we also introduced, we tied up with the, with the Red Cross. We had bloodletting. We had some medical missions and bloodletting so that um, they, would, uh, the, they would come to the developments. And many of the residents uh, would donate blood. And we actually turned over a lot of blood to the Department of Health, which is very timely in this uh, uh, current uh, uh, pandemic crisis. Yeah. So throughout this pandemic, you guys have a number of launches that are happening. Uh, GEM residents is being one of them. Can you take us a little bit more through what GEM has to offer uh, to people that might be interested in, uh, in that project? GEM um, carries the uh, features of uh, uh, traditional to SMBC projects. Um, like it, uh, it's conveniently located. Um, it has all the uh, conveniences that you will look for because there's a uh, decent amount of commercial area in, uh, uh, in that place. Um, it has uh, the a resort style amenities and the um, hotel-like lobbies. Uh, but then a special feature that we uh, introduce in GEM is what we call the Creators Park. It's actually a co-working area uh, in outside where you have tables and chairs there and um, uh, strong Wi-Fi, where you can actually bring your laptop there and you can work uh, in a nice uh, environment. You have a lot of uh, landscape and uh, a lot of activity going around. But this, so, so you're happy. If you don't want to work in your, in your unit, uh, you want a lot of um, people around, you can, you can actually uh, be more creative in this creator's park. Because you can get a lot, just a lot of information and you get a lot of ideas. So that's a new feature that we are uh, launching uh, here in the GEM residences. Very cool. Is this something that's new to us? <laughs> done before? We we uh, actually thought about that because of this new uh, trend of work from home, mm -hmm. where we discovered that many of our uh, buyers would like to 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 stay in the in their in, in their in the complex. So that um, rather than let them uh, lock them up in their units, we provided that environment uh, that would allow them to work uh, uh, with the community around them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think with the yeah, going to work from home, you might be spending eight, nine, ten hours a day in front of a computer in your in your condo. Um, to have that availability to go outside and get Wi-Fi, like you mentioned, um, and to be in an outdoor space where you feel comfortable and safe, um, is something that I don't think many condos have it at least in Metro Manila. Um, so it's a it's a unique feature that you guys bring. Um, when when is Gem going to be launched? Uh, when is Gem going to be launched? We, were, we just launched Gem a month ago and it's actually selling oh. quite well. Oh okay. Very cool. And and what's the range for, for prices there and what type of units can you buy? About six to seven million pesos per unit. Okay, great. Which, Very cool. But we have payment terms that uh, that make it comfortable for them on a monthly basis. Great, great. Uh, cool. And uh, what, what keeps you motivated to, uh, to keep launching throughout everything? You know, you guys have been going to work ever since May, uh, you said. So what's the, um, you know, what keeps you guys motivated to, to keep providing projects for the, for the public? Well, the thing is when the pandemic hit and the lockdown started in March, uh, we continue to uh, uh, operate uh, we were able to continue to sell using the internet and so on. So that our inventory uh, got depleted, actually. The problem was that while we were continuing to sell, we couldn't get our permits because the government offices were closed. So uh, we, we were worried that our inventory uh, actually reached a level where we were not, we were not comfortable. So that um, uh, fortunately, when everything reopened, we started to uh, accelerate our launches. We are following, we actually have a quite a um, uh, big pipeline for this year. We've already launched 60 billion uh, of inventory up to August, and we plan to launch another 80 billion uh, up to the end of the year uh, because we need to replenish our inventory. So since the market's been good to us, yeah. uh, we have to make sure that we have the inventory uh, to, to give the, our buyers choice. Choices. Yeah, it seems like it. Um, you know, you're you're catering to that backlog backlog of housing that you mentioned before. That there's so many people looking 
per uh, yes. condo place to live within that price range. And if you guys can't deliver, you know, many people aren't able to, you know, to move into their properties or uh, find that perfect home for themselves. So you are catering to that market that's, you know, looking to find that that dream home um, in that in that range that you offer. So, so what's next for SMDC? You know, what's next for you guys uh, for the rest of this year and then moving forward? Uh, we expect that uh, the inventory we're launching will be taken up uh, quickly. Uh, so we, we still buy a lot of land, uh, not only in Metro Manila and Luzon, which is actually where we've grown very fast, but also in the uh, Visayas, the Southern, Southern uh, Philippines. Uh, we are creating new products. We've actually, um, uh, we were sensitive to the fact that uh, many of the, our uh, buyers, the incomes have been impaired because of this crisis. So we're coming up with uh, even more affordable products. So mm -hmm. with features that would address um, the current trends, like uh, that would address work from home and social distancing and mm -hmm. so on, so that uh, our products continue to evolve to match what the market wants and at the same time, make it more affordable to make sure that the people who have less income now will still be able to afford to buy their homes. Yeah. Yeah. Have you found that um, a lot of the OFWs have moved back to the provinces? Are they coming to Manila or is it a, a mix of both or uh, what have you kind of seen? Many of the, uh, I think about 75% of the OFWs are based in the Luzon area. Mm. So that um, uh, we've seen a lot of demand uh, in our uh, projects in the periphery of Metro Manila and mm -hmm. uh, in the southern Philippines and central, cent uh, southern Luzon and central Luzon. So oh. they've had to go back. But after this crisis is over, they'll be called back to, to, to the, their, uh, the countries where they were working because the Filipinos are the employees of choice of the yeah. world. They're very, uh, yeah, they're very flexible, they speak English, they're intelligent, they're educated, and they have yeah. a very nice attitude. So mm -hmm. these people will just be here for a few months and then uh, when things uh, stabilize, they'll all be going, be going back overseas. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're confident of that. You can't go anywhere in the world without meeting a Filipino. There, there's Filipino communities uh, everywhere you go in the world. Um, more, more than seventy percent of our sales are actually to overseas Filipinos. Wow. wow. So, uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you capture that market? Yeah. Do you, how do you market abroad? How are you attracting or getting in, uh, getting in touch with these people? Uh, we have uh, uh, a very wide uh, broker network overseas, mm -hmm. so uh, they've been referring a lot of clients to us. Uh, during the pandemic, we discovered also that um, the power of internet online selling. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we've, um, uh, we gave a lot of funding to our sellers to set up their own websites and to boost their websites so they can reach a bigger market. So, so our uh, sales comes both from uh, our physical broker network and also through the internet. Oh, wow, yeah, definitely the digital uh, has improved or been a uh, you know a factor into why um, everyone's you know uh, the the late adapters have moved towards the e-commerce space um, because of the pandemic so interesting that now it's right. not, not only about just buying clothes and shoes and things like that and groceries but now even real estate has shifted towards the uh, digital right. marketplace. Um, you know so things like virtual tours and uh, videos and uh, professional photos are becoming even more important because people are making decisions based on what they've seen on, on the internet. Have you seen those trends happen as well? Oh well, yes, actually we have our own version of, uh, uh, we're creating an interactive website that uh, basically allows buyers to fill the showroom uh, mm. using the internet. So you have, you know, the 360 degree, uh, yeah. this view of yeah. uh, our showrooms. And um, mm. it will, we have a, a program that would allow the buyers actually to reserve the units uh, it's really a seller-less transaction. Uh, that uh, even if you're from some distant country like Kazakhstan or yeah. right Bolivia, and you want to yeah. buy in the Philippines, you can actually do the transaction just using the internet. Is, is that something that uh, you guys implemented recently, or is that something that's been going ongoing for it's, guys? It's, it's, for it's developing. We'll be rolling that out very soon. Uh, okay. There's a, a pilot uh, that that we're testing, but then we mm -hmm. continue to improve it. Uh, what we want is for the 
uh, web for the uh, website to sell the Philippines and to sell real estate in the Philippines and give the uh, potential buyer the capability to actually do the transaction just uh, through the internet. Great, yeah, I think that's a, a great initiative and I think that it's gonna help a lot of people find their perfect home, um, especially making use of the technology that's available to them. Um, great, so in closing, is there anything you'd like to uh, say to our viewers, uh, anything that they can um, you know, learn about SMDC uh, from you in, in, in closing? No, well, we are actually um, appreciative to our buyers who continue to support SMDC, who continue to trust our brand. Um, we assure uh, the market that we will continue to come up with uh, uh, products uh, with features that uh, have what you're looking for. Uh, we continue to watch the trends to make sure that um, uh, we offer uh, products that would make it life comfortable to you, give you dignity, give you elegance, and that uh, at the same time still be affordable. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time today and for all your information. And, and uh, um, it's exciting to hear what SMDC is up to next. And hopefully we can catch up again soon. And maybe we're going to do a run one day together. Thank you very much, Kenneth. Thank you.